Jesus. So aliens do exist. And they're trying to kill us. Isn't life dandy? Dead Space Extraction really took me by surprise. Spinoffs can be hit or miss, but plenty of love and care was put into Extraction. It's got excellent pacing, the gameplay transfers well to a rail shooter, the horror is maintained, and its narrative is well thought out. If you want a better idea of what happened planet side on Aegis 7 when the marker was discovered, and what happened on the USG Ishimura prior to Dead Space 1, you'll get that in Dead Space Extraction. In my Dead Space videos, I did receive a number of comments suggesting looking at this title. As I recently covered the Resident Evil rail shooter titles on the Wii, I was in the mood for more. I'm glad to have checked it out. It has more of a focus on the narrative and less shooting compared to other rail shooters, but it does a great job of balancing the two. I never felt like the game dragged or wondered when I get back to shooting. If you're a fan of Dead Space, you owe it to yourself to check out Extraction if you haven't. For this video, I'm doing the same approach here as I took for my video on the Resident Evil rail shooters on Wii. I'm playing the Wii version of Extraction here on the Dolphin emulator with a mouse and keyboard, slightly upscaled. There's also a PS3 version if you want to make use of a controller and have something with better graphics. Developed in 14 months, Extraction was a collaborative project with Visceral Games and Eurocom. Eurocom's main focus was arcade to console ports and working on other IPs. However, they had closed down just three years later in late 2012. The idea for the game came about halfway through development of Dead Space. The Wii was chosen due to its motion controls. This is during that time frame where EA was pushing new IPs. Remember that time frame? This also required expanded universe material to be produced as well. Dead Space got this treatment. Comics, animated movies, although no ice cream bars. You could even view some of the comics here in the bonus material, and it's all fully voiced. Even with the Wii lacking hardware firepower, this still has to be one of the better looking Wii games. The engine used here, Engine X, is a Eurocom game engine. Even if it's not on the same level of graphic fidelity, everything transferred over here wonderfully presentation-wise. It's also a testament of how strong the art direction is for Dead Space. You could show someone familiar with a gameish screenshot, even just a simple hallway, and they'll be like, yeah, that's Dead Space. Combat here is more or less intact from Dead Space, with adjustments for the on-rail setup. You know the drill, go for the limbs. So all these years later, I'm still surprised more games have really not pulled from this idea. Beyond a few indie titles here and there, this whole cut off the limbs idea still mostly sits within the Dead Space IP. I wouldn't mind if we got more Dead Space clones in the vein of Resident Evil clones that followed in the late 90s. Kinesis is used here to bring in objects to collect. However, there's no real kinesis to impale them objects lying around, although that would be more into Dead Space 2 territory. The game also makes a few creative uses of kinesis throughout the game to keep things fresh. Luxine! Are you alright? Stasis is here as well for slowing down enemies and the environments in a few situations. Each weapon will have alternate fire. For the Wii version, you need to twist the remote sideways for alternate fire. Now as I'm playing this on a mouse and keyboard, I had alternate fire key set to spacebar. I could see how it could be a bit annoying and tiring after a period of time if done like that on a Wii remote. Beyond the familiar weapons from Dead Space, there are a couple new additions. The Arc Welder, which again appears in Dead Space 3, and the PSEC Pistol. The rivet gun serves as our infinite ammo gun that is common in rail shooters. We could carry four at a time with the rivet gun being the only mandatory weapon. Glowworms are used to light berries in the dark for a period of time. This is also one of the shortcomings in the presentation. I find the lighting a bit off in these sections with the glowworms. At various points we'll stop and have a few seconds to look around and pick up goodies. Every once in a while we'll also get to choose a direction and progressing forward. There are audio logs and notes thrown about. Due to the constraints of rails, it makes it easier to script these out as well since the game is, well, on rails. We don't have to worry about enemies getting in the way while listening to an audio log. Notes will also pause as we read them. When I covered the Resident Evil rail shooters on Wii, my biggest issue with Dark Side Chronicles and a common complaint the game received was the excessive of camera shake. Well, Dead Space Extraction has the best solution here. You can adjust how much camera shake there is. I initially turned it down all the way, but then moved it up a tiny bit. I found this the most enjoyable. It adds more tension, but wasn't annoying to the extent that Dark Side Chronicles did with its camera shake. Dead Space Extraction makes use of active reload. Gears of War helped popularize this concept. When you reload, you can wait for it to finish reloading, or hit reload again in a small window for a faster reload. Missing results in a longer reload. All weapons have a slightly different window size and timing. I really like this addition. It always keeps you on your toes in combat, and always something to keep in mind when switching weapons and how different it will reload. 
It didn't just feel like it was placed in here because Gears of War was a big title at the time. It's not a huge penalty if you reload again at the wrong time, but you don't want it to happen in combat too often. For melee, there's no foot stomping, but instead a slash. This is more just to stun the enemy if they get too close, as not much damage is done. For road extraction, we'll have to solder some doors to get them open by moving the cursor across. They get more difficult as we progress as more obstacles are tossed our way. There's also various points we'll be doing these while also dealing with enemies. I love the tension these bits add. Sure, it's easy just to stasis them and get through them, but you can't dick around all day with it. Zero gravity makes an appearance as well. Here, it's aiming at highlighted spots to move around. They were initially going to have it where you could go anywhere you want in these scenarios, but they found it created frustrations and decided to keep it on rails. And probably the best choice in these kind of conditions. The breathing, the heartbeats, this works really well here. All this atmosphere transfers very well. As this is first person, there are some changes to the UI, but still quite minimal. Part of me also wonders how Dead Space would look and play in first person. Too bad the game wasn't mod friendly to do so. Although I did come across this channel on YouTube that made a few tweaks to it. It's just making the model of Isaac invisible and boosting the movement speed. There isn't a store or bench, but upgrades will be found throughout the levels. You can't really miss them as they stand out with their color, although you can miss them if you're too slow. Power node rooms return, although you don't need power nodes to open them. And depending on how while you know the layout of the Ishimura, you'll know exactly where to expect these. I would rather have an upgrade bench between levels, as there's much more choice there. Here, what you pick up is what you get. You don't get a choice of what gun gets upgraded and how it gets upgraded. It's not a huge detriment, but something to note. For the enemies, all these necromorphs, you know them, you love to shoot them dead. There are a couple of new ones that pop up as well and even human enemies at the beginning. There is one really annoying enemy, these small little buggers that jump on you and require you to shake them off. They don't do much damage, but it's easy to get locked in a few of these buggers getting on you over and over. Spoilers ahead here for Dead Space Extraction and a bit on Dead Space itself. The story of Dead Space Extraction takes place shortly before Dead Space. It gives context of what happened on the surface of Aegis 7 and the USG Ishimura before Isaac arrived. It helps to fill in a number of gaps. We start off playing as Sam, having a chat with his girlfriend Lexine. A marker has been found. Sam Caldwell, if you had an imagination, you'd be dangerous. We'll see about that tonight. Ooh, I look forward to it. I do like this little fake out here with the third person. Sam, come on. Get suited up quicker. The only date you'll have is with an overtime sheet. We're here starting on the surface of Aegis 7. Eventually we'll make our way to the Ishimura. So a lot of the game works in reverse with the progress to Dead Space. So we are covering a lot of familiar territory here. However, it never feels lazy or like an asset reuse. There's much more narrative focus here than other rail shooters. There's a lot of ground that gets covered here in a very efficient way. There are plenty of sections where you won't be doing any shooting, and it works just fine. The tension is always there, and the dialogue keeps things moving. If this was, say, a House of the Dead game, that'd be more of a detriment, but for a game like Dead Space, it works great. The tutorial at the beginning here makes great use of showing that, oh yeah, these weapons that we come across, they're tools for our work. They're not just for shooting off limbs. Throughout the game, we'll use the alternate fire of the rivet gun to seal off entrances. We found a marker, so you know how things are going to go here. However, the game gives a surprising amount of time to breathe before jumping into the action. It isn't a good 30 minutes or so into the game that you come across your first necromorph. There are none in the first level. Considering the game's around four and a half hours, that's quite a bit of constraint here. Compare that to the first Dead Space. As much as I love that game, I always felt that they shot their wad a bit early with how quickly Necromorph showed up. So prior to Necromorphs, it's crazed humans feeling the effects of the marker coming after us. By habit, I would take out their limbs. We're feeling the effects of the marker pretty quickly here. This also hits differently from a first person perspective. <laughs> And in a nice twist, it turns out Sam just wiped out his whole team due to the hallucinations, and he dies. What? You... You're not... Hostile is down. Repeat. Hostile is down. Good shot, sir. Shooting one of your own is never good. 
that, we switch over to Nate McNeil, PSAC officer on Aegis 7. And no, with a name like that, he's not some loose cannon having issues with his superiors and alcohol. Although now I wonder how someone like a Jimmy McNulty would handle what happens here. Gabe Weller, an old friend, joins on planet side, coming from the Ishimura. Before you know it, shit hits the fan here. There's a great bit here of everyone out in the open tearing each other apart. It's also in this level where we'll finally come across our first necromorph with a very casual aliens exist. So aliens do exist. We run to Lexine. She was the one the first level Sam was talking to. Sam was her boyfriend. So eventually our party grows to a merry band of four adventurers. Nate, Gabe, Lexi, and one more. Warren! <coughs> Warren Eckhart! Executive Director of Colonial Mining Operations. There's a different kind of horror here than the isolation horror. It's much more the group horror, protecting the others in our group dealing with the conflict that arises. And yet, at this point, no one seems to really have any effects from the marker. However, it's once we separate at various points that these start to flare up again. There is good banter and talk amongst the four. They take things seriously, and they're not quipping at every little whim. Humor comes at the right moments. What the hell is this stuff? No idea. Not like the other shit we saw. Smells just as bad, though. Eventually we'll make our way into the USG Ishimura in the midst of shit hitting the fan there. We're going to be making our way through familiar territory here, just in a different order than Dead Space. It's also a testament to how well the Ishimura was laid out and how memorable it is. If you've played the first game, you'll know where things are, and even where the power node rooms are here. There's lots of cases of, oh, so that's how that came to be in Dead Space. It's a nice use of fleshing things out. And we'll also get to spend a fair amount of time with Nicole, you know, before things went wrong with her. Lexine is a bit of an odd duck here. There's a lot of weird stuff happening with her, with her nosebleeds and headaches. Your readings are very unusual. BP is very high. Brain activity is off the charts. And why is Eckhart so curious about these readings? Eckhart, do you need anything? I'm, I'm fine. Just give me a minute. Lexine gets separated from us, and the three are at each other's throats within minutes, and the marker effects start to pop up. Someone's crying, damn it! Don't tell me I can't hear it! <laughs> Hold your fire! We need to conserve ammo! But I... Huh? It's gone. Stop it! Stop it! Be quiet! Whoa! Stop what? <laughs> Somebody's humming. Uh, I'm not humming. You humming? We have another character switch to Dr. Howell for hydroponics. I do enjoy how the game makes it clear with the change in character. We're always looking at some sort of reflection to see this change. She's having pretty heavy impact from the marker, but once she runs into Lexine, that stops. Then it turns out Eckhart is a unitologist. It's him who's been planting a whole bunch of these pesky marker heads on the Ishimura. Upon splitting up the party and remaining with Gabe, Eckhart betrays him, revealing he's here to get Lexine. Her immunity to the markers is something to be studied. Luckily, he gets what's coming to him. My reward was- <laughs> Pulling a page from the first Dead Space, the first letter of every chapter name ends up spelling War and Lies. In the first game, this spells out Nicole is dead. During the last stretch, there's a great moment where you play as Nate, where you have no choice but to chop off your arm. <laughs> I had flashbacks here to the bit from the dig when you have to chop off Brink's hand to free him. There was no final boss, but more of a gauntlet of holding off enemies, which was a bit of a letdown. There are a couple boss fights here in Extraction, and they're enjoyable. They make great use of the game mechanics with a good sense of progression. Nate makes it back in time before the shell heads off, but sadly succumbs to his injuries and becomes a necromorph. In turn, he's killed by Lexine, which is a bummer because there were signs of a budding romance between him and Lexine. Taking your time. McNeil? Lexine! Weller! Eckhart! Nate! Lexine! Thank God! Why me? Didn't want to split the lovebirds up. This wouldn't be the last time we see Gabe and Lexine. The DLC for Dead Space 2 is centered around them, so I didn't cover this DLC in my video on Dead Space 2. For whatever reason, this DLC wasn't released on PC. All EA said about that was it would not come to PC. 
I don't think any of their other major IPs like Dragon Age from EA around this time did the same thing, so who knows. I was going to emulate it with a PS3 emulator to get the footage here. Up to this point I've used this emulator a few times for PS3 games with no issues. However, for whatever reasons, I couldn't fix these very annoying audio stutter issues. I spent a bunch of time going through forums and YouTube to find some solutions to this. Nothing seemed to work, and at that point I just said fuck it, watch this play through on YouTube. It's just under an hour. So that's the footage that you're seeing here. This DLC takes place during the events of Dead Space 2, three years after Extraction. Gabe and Lexine are now an item and have started a new life on the sprawl. Lexine is now pregnant. Gabe is off to rescue her, but deals with necromorphs and betrayals along the way. These mysterious men in white want to take away Lexine. She's part of the Oracle program, seeing if she could pass along her immunity to the marker's effects to her child. Whose orders, Mr. Bartlett, and which key subjects? No! No! We have our orders, Mr. Bartlett, and we are following them. No! Who are you? Stay away from me! Gabe! No! Gabe ends up sacrificing himself so that Lexine can escape. I'm not gonna make it. No! That's not possible! I can blow the bay doors for you from here. And that's the last we hear of Lexine. She doesn't pop up in Dead Space 3. Maybe she would have made an appearance in the planned Dead Space 4 before that got canned. She's very much a wildcard character, being one of the few that isn't affected by the marker. Who knows, maybe the Dead Space remake will integrate more of her story into the game? I guess we'll have to wait and see. While Extraction reviewed well, it sold poorly. Around 9,000 units were sold in September of its launch. It would eventually be released on PlayStation 3. It was included in the Dead Space 2 limited edition and also standalone the same day release as Dead Space 2. I couldn't find any info on its download numbers. Why the low sales? Well, it could be a number of factors. Dead Space at this point was a new franchise. This was the second release in the series and the first on the Wii. The Wii didn't have a ton of mature based games. To get more of an idea, I took a look at the sales numbers for the two Resident Evil Rail shooters on Wii. Released in late 2007, Umbrella Chronicles would sell just under a million copies within a month of release. This is about 50% more above the expected forecast from Capcom. However, for Darkseid Chronicles, which released a couple months after Dead Space Extraction in November 2009, was a sales disappointment. 16,000 copies were sold here just before Christmas, a little over a month after launch. It really is too bad, as Dead Space Extraction has a lot of love and care put into it. Could have been so easy for them to coast and slap something together with a lot of thought put into it. But it's anything but. It's worth checking out, whether you're a rail shooter fan or a Dead Space fan. It's always well worth your time hopping back onto the USG Ishimura. Thanks everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video on Dead Space Extraction. If you'd like to support the channel further, please check out my Patreon, you'll get access to videos earlier, you'll get weekly updates of what I'm working on, you'll get featured in the credits here. Thanks everyone, we'll their punch out. Heads up, we've got the high ground.